What's up guys, my name is Brock, you're watching The Modest Man, and today we're talking about my favorite affordable dive watch, especially for smaller wrists, the Seiko SKX-013. All right, much like the Seiko brand in general, the SKX is highly respected uh, amongst collectors, enthusiasts of you know any budget, any level. Uh, people love this watch. Now it's available in a couple of different colorways and sizes. My favorite is the uh, SKX-013 with the black dial, and this is the smaller version of the watch. This watch is the epitome of value or getting a lot for your money. Uh, you can get it for anywhere from 200 to 250, depending where you buy it. Uh, and it's just an amazing deal for what you're getting for that amount of money. This is my first automatic watch and I am never parting with it. You know, I don't care if one day I get a Rolex Submariner, I'm gonna keep this watch. And if I ever have kids, one of them will get this watch. It's a true diver. Uh, it's a 200 meter ISO rated watch. Uh, in fact, um, in the movie All Is Lost, uh, Robert Redford wore an SKX. Uh, he played a sailor who was stranded at sea and the SKX was kind of his trusty companion throughout the film. It was really cool. Now, I'm not sure which one he wore, um, but this is the 013. It's the smaller version. And uh, that's part of the reason I love it. You know, so many dive watches are uh, so big and chunky uh, and they just kind of look a little oversized on my somewhat small wrists. So that's definitely part of the appeal of this particular model. The 38 millimeter size is perfect for my wrist. Um, and don't get me wrong, it's not it's not a dainty watch, you know. It's I think the case height is 13 millimeters. Uh, it's a chunky little watch, you know. It's heavy, especially on this oyster strap, uh, but it still looks fine. It looks proportionate on smaller wrists. You know, you you feel this watch on your wrist. It has a presence, and if you hand it to somebody, they usually kind of bounce it up and down and say, oh yeah, that's, that's a heavy watch. But that's kind of the nature of dive watches and I don't think it's a bad thing. Okay, let's look at the specs. This watch runs on the 7S26 movement. Uh, it's automatic, so that means there's no battery and it's going to wind up uh, with the movement of your hand and your arm. It is a non-hacking, non-hand windable movement. Uh, and sure, it'd be better if it were hacking and hand windable, but I don't think that's a deal breaker for most people. So it has a thick stainless steel case and a rotating bezel. Just listen to that. So you can rotate it counterclockwise to use as a timer. The crown is a screw down crown, which helps with the water resistance. Uh, so you unscrew it and then pop it out once change the day and the date and you pop it out again to change the time and then when you're done you push it all the way in and then screw it down. So the SKX features Seiko's Hardlex crystal. This is a proprietary uh, material that Seiko developed in-house. It's uh, just a special kind of hardened uh, mineral glass. It is extremely impact resistant and shatterproof although it's not gonna be as scratch resistant as sapphire crystal. The dial is kind of a matte black. It's extremely legible, um, really nice printing. There's plenty of loom to help you read the time and date in the dark. And like many divers, there's a depth to this watch. There's a noticeable space between the glass and the dial, which I personally think is really interesting and really inviting. So the SKX-013 can be purchased on a black rubber band. Uh, which traditionally would be used for diving. It can also be purchased on the stock Jubilee bracelet. That's how I got mine. Um, it's a pretty cheap bracelet, you know, it feels kind of janky. It's got the hollow end links and, um, you know, I, I actually thought it was pretty comfortable, um, but it definitely felt cheap. Like I wouldn't wanna get tossed around in the waves or anything. I just didn't trust it. So I ended up putting mine on this Oyster bracelet uh, from Strap Code. And this particular bracelet was made specifically for the 013. So it's got these solid end links uh, that are curved to match the curves of this specific watch, which is pretty cool. It looks like it was meant to be, like this watch came on this bracelet. And I personally think that uh, the thick, chunky, kind of heavy nature of the Oyster bracelet matches really well 
uh, with this watch. I think it, it's very natural. And this is a nice bracelet. It was my first time ordering from Strapcode. I was really happy with it, so I'll link to that down below. But one of the nice things is uh, the links have these um, screw-in pins, so you don't hammer them out one side, you just unscrew them and pull them out. So it makes adjusting the length of the bracelet really easy. You can do it at home with a uh, like a very small knife or a very small screwdriver. Of course, you could put this guy on like a NATO strap or a leather strap if you wanted to. I wear this watch everywhere. It's, it's probably my, my most well-worn watch. Uh, it works for almost any scenario. The only time I wouldn't wear this watch is with a suit. Um, you know, dive watches are not dress watches. I know sometimes people think they are because they're metal and they're shiny, but they're actually uh, very much a sport watch. So they're they're not really that dressy, and so you couldn't really wear this with a suit. It's also really thick, so it's it's gonna be hard to fit it under the cuff of a dress shirt. But I mean, casual, smart casual, even business casual, this watch is perfect. Uh, like jeans and a button-up shirt, it's perfect for that. Chinos, uh, boots, a sweater, and a field jacket, this watch is great. Even like shorts and a t-shirt, you know, this watch is still uh, perfect for that level of formality. I've worn this watch to the beach, I've worn it in the pool, and I gotta say there's something very satisfying about submerging this watch and swimming around with it on. So my recommendation if you're looking for an affordable automatic dive watch, an entry-level diver, uh, I can't think of a better option than the Seiko SKX, and if you have smaller wrists like me, uh, you know, the O13 is perfect. So uh, I hope this was helpful. Let me know if you have this watch or if you're thinking about getting it. If you have any questions about this watch, let me know down in the comments. And until next time, stay stylish.